Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be addressing the issue of does it make sense to hit male armor uh, with a sword, okay? Uh, and in the type of sword fighting that I, pr that I mostly practice, it's pre-15th century, so uh, it focuses on the era prior to plate armor. Uh, so in my style of fighting, what we're doing is we're, we're hitting male armor um, with a sword like this, a type X sword, and what we're doing is we're hitting it hard. Um, so you know, so what we're doing is we're trying to break bones um, through that male. So you can't cut the male, but you can break bones uh, and injure the muscle so that the person will not be able to continue fighting. Okay, um, and certainly if you hit them in the head, you know, if they if they're only wearing a male coif and you hit them with a sword like this, I mean, there's a good chance that you're gonna basically just crack that head open. Uh, if they're wearing a nasal cap, a metal nasal cap over that, um, you're not gonna break the head, but you can give them a good concussion. It's gonna also take them out of the fight. Um, most medieval helmets were not that heavy. You know, they were between a pound and a half to two pounds because people lived in it, you know. They, 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 they you know, if they were going to, to war, you know, they would usually march for weeks before they even got to the battlefield, okay. So, so, so most medieval helmets were pretty light, okay. Um, so the question becomes, does it, does it make sense, you know. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to look at modern day combat uh, to see what, what, what the special forces units do today. Um, um, you know, one of the things that they, um, that, they, that they have to consider is the possibility that they will be fighting other combatants uh, in body armor, okay? Because most special forces units wear body armor, uh, but they also have to anticipate the possibility that, that, that they might, especially if they're fighting uh, like Chinese or Russians, uh, there's a good chance that they're going to be in body armor. But there's also the situation where if they're fighting terrorists, uh, the terrorists have basically taken, um, you know, taken uh, American equipment and are using American body armor. Okay, so there are certain techniques that they, that, that that are practiced uh, to deal with that. Okay, so what I have here is I have a a bad guy. Okay, this is uh, this is our terrorist over here. Okay, and this is his face, okay? and this is his body over here, and he's got body armor. He's got Class Three body armor, um, which will basically stop. Um, an AK round, or an uh, you know, or any round from a uh, from from an M4, okay, or M16. Uh, so it, you know, and the uh, most most American units use the 556 caliber, okay. That's that's one of the, the most common uh, caliber that they use. So uh, we're gonna look at a technique that is used uh, to fight against uh, body armor, okay. So let me put this down. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to perform a, the zipper drill, okay? This is a, a, a somewhat commonly known drill that's used against body armor. Okay, there's my bad guy. Okay, and this is a situation now where we're doing close quarters combat, okay? I, I, I basically, have, I'm coming into a room and I got a bad guy in front of me at relatively close range. That guy is dead. Okay, uh, let's talk about what I did there. Okay, what I did is I came into the room. I see the bad guy. Okay, who's who 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 I have to assume is wearing body armor, um, because even if I can't see it, you know, I kind of have to assume he's wearing body armor. Okay, uh, because this is the modern world. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the center mass, the biggest target. Okay, and I'm going to basically start shooting at center mass and walk my bullets up until I get to the face area right here, the T-box, because I know that there's no armor over here. Um, the purpose of hitting the bomber, the body armor um, is to create an opportunity uh, to get to an unarmored area. Okay, so the question becomes, why not go straight to the, to, the, to the area that I know is not armored? Well, here's the thing. If I'm coming into a room, I'm moving, the, my opponent is moving, uh, which means that, you know, the head is a relatively small area, and it moves you know this doesn't move as much this down here moves even less okay so down here we tend to get the least amount of movement up here we get you know you know a little less movement and th th this th this 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 moves a lot so it's hard to go straight to a uh, to a headshot okay um, so so we're bursting into a room and basically we start shooting center mass and walk our shots up until we get 
uh, to the face. And what we're doing is, we are hit, we, you know, if, if the person's wearing body armor, we are hitting them percussively. Okay? We are putting percussive hits uh, that they cannot ignore. Okay, those, those percussive hits are going to force them to do something. Um, try to take cover, try to duck down, uh, and, and that's part of the reason we also start low because because if you burst into a room, there's a good chance that they're going to they're going to fall down to their knees. So so we want to start low. So if they if they do go down, they basically they're going to bring you know if you start shooting here and they kneel down now you you basically you're shooting them in the face anyway. Um, so we're going to start here and walk our shots up. Uh, they may basically turn to the side. Uh, in which case they're going to open up the armpit here, which basically is not armored, okay? Uh, so that's another good shot uh, to take with, with, with an M4. Um, so, so, um, so this is how, you know, modern day, um, you know, special forces units train to defeat body armor, okay? They put percussive hits on the body armor to create opportunities to get the shot that they want to, to get. They don't, you know, it, it, it doesn't, you know, they've determined that trying to take a, a headshot right off the bat would probably end up wasting more time because basically you're sitting there, you're, you're trying to, you know, if you come into a room and you, you're trying, you know, you're move, you're, you're, I mean, first of all, you're not going to be stable, right? So if I'm here, you know, if, I, if, if I'm breathing hard, I just came into a room, maybe up a flight of staircase, I'm not going to be that stable. The muzzle might be moving around a, a, a little bit. Um, so, so it's really, you know, plus if my opponent's moving, it's hard to get that perfect shot in the face. However, this area here that's big and round, you know, that's a lot that's that's a lot easier to hit so i'm going to walk my shots up um you know and, and, and use the body shots on the body armor to create the opportunity to take that that face shot okay um now with if we got a class uh three uh vest that that basically we know that the uh this gun is not going to penetrate i mean uh, a lot of people say well why not why not go to a bigger gun why not take a 308 or something the, the problem with 308s, you know, that 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 will penetrate a class three is that the gun is bigger, heavier, um, and the bullets are also longer. Um, so what that means is that because the bullets are, you know, he longer and heavier, you can carry less ammunition. So what the military has has mostly decided that it makes sense to carry a lot more lighter ammunition and and lighter guns. Um, you know, because it allows them to be more effective, okay? Um, and, and that's not my decision, that's their decision, okay? Through lots of testing, through lots of trial and error, through combat, uh, they decided that it makes the most sense to use the lightest possible gun. And that's what this is. The, the you know, World War II guns were more powerful than this gun and, and, and maybe even more accurate than this gun. Um, the benefit of this gun it is that it is a light. This gun, you know, unloaded weighs about six and a half pounds. Okay, um, so this is a very light gun. That's the main benefit of this gun. So how about pistols? Same guy over there. We've got, you know, we come into the room. Okay, he's got body armor on. We don't have, you know, we don't have the rifle right now. We only have a pistol uh, for whatever reason. Um, you know, maybe we weren't expecting to find him there. Maybe he broke into our. Uh, into our office or whatever um and he's got body armor okay if the rifle is not able to penetrate the body armor the pistol right especially nine millimeter uh, certainly won't okay so what are we going to do we're going to do the same exact drill okay so same deal Start low, work your way up, get to the face, uh, and finish, you know, and finish him there, okay? Um, so, so, like I said, this is a common drill that's, that's practiced today specifically to oppose body armor, okay? We hit the body armor, which we know is not going to be, we're not going to penetrate. We're hitting the body armor percussively to create opportunities uh, to take the head shot or the armpit shot. Uh, that we want okay so um, it makes sense to me that if this applies today if it works today in modern day combat it w also would have applied um, you know five six hundred years ago uh, when people were wearing um, you know mail armor okay so uh, if you guys got any questions or comments anything you want to add by all means please do uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up uh, if you're not a member of the channel subscribe I'll see you guys next time